Hi, I'm Nick Morrow with Cabot Guns and Alchemy Custom Weaponry. In this final installment of ACW Unplugged, we're going to be with our gunsmiths as they build and blend and finish the lower of an Alchemy pistol, as well as the test fire, some of the finish prep, as well as some of the final assembly, and the steps that goes all in between. Now, like I said before in the videos, we can't show you the entire process because it would take hours and hours and hours, It'd be way too long to watch, and also we like to keep some stuff, you know, magic behind the scenes. However, in this case, we actually had more video filmed of blending on the frame. Uh, I had some really cool stuff of uh, blending the grip safety, you know, fitting the disconnector, the sear, the hammer, the hammer hooks, like all that stuff. There was extra footage but all of the audio got corrupted. So even though it was still a, a, a smaller version of what we do, the audio corruption made it even smaller than that. So there was some interference that uh, interfered with our mic. So unfortunately we don't have that, but even without that extra footage, this is a very good glimpse of what goes into every single Alchemy Custom Weaponry 1911 that makes it so special and so unique um, and quite different from a lot of the other pistols on the market. Enjoy. So with the upper complete, um, blended to the frame, barrels chambered, it's time to move on to building the lower. So we'll come over here and talk to Tori, world champion of too much stuff on her bench. <laughs> and uh, wh what are you working on here? How far have we gotten on this one? This is the start of a magwell. Okay. All right. So this one has been spec to have an extended magwell rather than just a standard mainspring housing. So how different is that for you? very extremely different um there's a ton of work that i have to get in these magwells to even get them sitting down all the way the blending itself yeah is a lot so on a on a standard mainspring housing um there's still still blending to go oh, on there yeah. yeah there's blending um i think i just did one on this one where i have to blend the bottom to the frame and then on top of that I have to blend this back head this back end on there and get any of the overrun lines that come on down here at the bottom and at the top yeah. and do some beveling in there so it's n it's not as simple as just grabbing either oh, the extended no. <laughs> or grabbing the magwell or grabbing the mainspring housing no. and putting it in there. So you're actually modifying the frame, yep. blending it to the frame, and now that's permanently part of that gun. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So on the extended one, um, what are some of the first steps you're going to do on that? The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm probably going to spend a decent amount of time removing a lot of the material that is on this little lip here. There's a high spot there. A notoriously difficult part to machine. Yes. Uh, flat plate the bottom just just enough to get rid of some of the machine marks or any burrs that are on it. So the first step is just getting it to agree with just, the frame. Yeah. To sit down flat, no light between the frame and yeah. And the and the little legs that come off the extended magwell. Okay. All right. So once you have that set up and you're ready to start blending the two of them together, what are some of the first steps you're doing on that? Um, first thing after it's already set up, I look at the frame and the magwell together and where that radius meets that flat, I'll make a line on the magwell, just eyeballing it, kind of put a little notch on both sides. And then I take it over to the belt sander. I am going to cut those front parts off that before that notch that I put in. And then I'm going to take a lot of the material out of the inside of the mag wall over on the belt sander so I don't have to do as much work. Now, let's say that it's all fit after the belt sander, then it would be all with not all of it, but most of it with the, um, the Fordham and a stone. And I can't get the back of it blended anywhere near on the belt sander. So I have to do all that. And I get pretty close with the belt sander on the blend to the frame here. Um, but I don't want to go over it too far. Uh, so I do it all at the bench. Then after with the stone, that takes me about, 
um, 20 minutes to get it close. And then after that, it's all just polishing. Polishing, making it look pretty, getting rid of all of the ripples that um, a spinning tool will give inside the magwell. So with the bell sander, you're doing coarse sculpting yep. to bring it close to the level of the integral magwell that's already in the frame yes. without going too far. Yep. So you're trying to bring the magwell down to the frame. Yes. But not too much. Yes. Okay. <laughs> And then you actually put them together and blend them as one piece by hand at yes. the bench. Okay. Yes. And they end up like this. Nice. Awesome. So after you have the housing fit, um, what, what's the next step you're typically moving to? The next thing that I do is I blend the grip safety. Um, someone before me has fit it and got it to function with the trigger. Okay. And I blend it together. All right, so it's time to blend? Yes. Okay, what's the first thing you're gonna do here? The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it all together. And then I'm going to blend the top of this together in the out position. Okay. And um, I just kind of start in the in the inside here, because that's where the higher amount of material is and blend my way out. Okay. And make it look pretty. Show us how it's done. So for blending the bottom, what position are you going to have the grip safety in? I am going to have it pressed in and taped down so it doesn't move. So the thought is blend it down for comfort? Yes. Okay. So that none of the points or none of these um, moving pieces pinch that soft spot of your, your hand when you're gripping it. Then it's going to need um, the air file um, to smooth a lot of this out, um, then gray wheel, and I'm going to have to reshape the outer edge of this um, to make it less bulky. Um, and then I will also do a bevel across the top edge as well. This one here, I have already gray wheeled, polished, made it look very pretty. I've reshaped the profile of it and I've started the outer bevel that I've added. Now I've just got to polish the bevel out and shine it up so it looks less chunky. Okay, so you're gonna add some bevels to this slide? Yes. Make it a little more carry friendly? Yes. Less likely to ding? Yep, I've got the whole front here and then the back since it is already blended to the frame of the slide it's ready for the bevel and then after the stone I turn to a flap wheel polish out all my stone marks how many slides would you say it took you before you felt proficient and confident beveling rounds like this? Um, over a hundred. Yeah. So I actually start before the round with my file on the flat and bring it around. That way you don't end up with a strange point? Yes. When you're trying to bring them together? All right, so after the upper's complete, uh, one of the first steps it will do is fitting of the trigger. So Ethan's working on one right here. Um, is there any frame prep that you have to do prior to fitting uh, the trigger? Clean up the trigger track a little bit. Do you? Okay. Yeah. So do you have a stone file? Where are you uh, going with that? Usually square. Okay, use a squaring file. Yeah. 
So he's in there with a squaring file, and uh, like you said, he's trying to kind of kind of square up the corners. Um, that's a broached operation, so depending on how sharp that particular cutter was, um, sometimes you'll end up with a little bit of radiuses in the corners, or um, you know, slight amounts of choppiness in there. So it's it's usually worth your time to take a file, slide it in there, make sure everything's nice and square, nice and flat, nice and smooth, knock any potential burrs out of the way, anything like that. So right now he's in there um, cleaning up the, the track where the bow itself, this area, will ride inside the frame. And then the second part of that cut is the area where the paddle rides. There's kind of, you know, you can picture it as kind of a, a, a T cut in there. Um, so now he's he's getting the top parts of that. It, yeah, if you had you know a notchy track or if you had any kind of kind of choppiness in there, you could end up with a hitchy trigger. You could have various you know clicks and hangups in there. So we're just trying to make sure there's no potential for that before we go trying to fit the trigger. If you went straight to the trigger and you ended up having something inside the frame, you risk potentially overfitting the trigger itself. And that, even though there was no problem with the actual trigger. So what? Well, now we had to mill off the top of it. Okay. So. so now we're getting the Bridgeport mill set up to mill a few thousandths off the top of the trigger. With our frames, there's always a little bit that needs to be taken off the top, and we know about how much that is. So we'll go ahead and just take that off the mill to keep everything smooth and straight and square right from the start. So the idea behind putting some marker on there is you're trying to sort of get eyes inside of the frame yeah, and, and where see where the con Okay. So from there, it's every frame is is kind of individual at that yeah. point, huh? So yeah. you really got to start markering them and cutting them. All right. So once you got that fit, uh, what are you, what are you looking for there? You're looking for uh, basically just free movement of the trigger. Free movement, no vertical up and down yeah. play in it. So you don't want it to be rattling and shaking all over, right. but. No hang-ups in the front to back. Yeah. Then you're Thanks, happy with man. it? Yep. Okay. So we're here in the test fire range. We've got a uh, prime here. We're gonna do some test fire. This one is in 45. So we're gonna start with a short magazine just to make sure we don't have any issues with feeder function. Now we've got a big 10 rounder. We know 10 rounders are pretty popular, so we wanna make sure they work with these. And then we've got a magazine kind of rainbowed with jagged hollow points and some FFJ, just to make sure we don't have any feed related issues. I'm gonna run that one from the slide stop too, just to make sure worst case scenario, it's gonna feed those jack power point rounds so our last magazine is a simple one round we're going to test the extractor so we're going to drop the slide on that remove the magazine and we're looking for really positive extraction and injection which we definitely got so this particular gun passes our test fire procedure and it's ready to go back out to the floor and get prepped for finish. Before they go to any final vendor finishing, we'll have to do some polishing on them. So let's walk over and talk to Nate and see what he's working on. So this is our polishing station. Um, we have some wheels over there. We have various abrasives that we use. And when it comes to polishing the flats, which is a super popular option on these pistols, um, that's all gonna happen on these granite flat plates. So as you can see here, Nate is taking this one down on the granite getting the side perfectly flat on some aluminum oxide paper. Um, he'll take that all the way up to a 30 micron polishing cloth. So this is one of those steps that you'll usually start a little bit before you get into the final finish, before you start doing the bead blast, just to make sure everything's flat. We started about a 220 grit sandpaper, work our way all the way up to 30 micron. So we usually get it nice and flat, get all the scratches out, get all the tool marks out, then take it to a nice blast condition before we start working it up to an actual polished flat. That'll be the last step prior to any kind of coating done on it. How's it going, Nate? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good, good. I'm uh, working 400 on the 
flat of this slide here. Just trying to get my lines even, trying to get the side nice and shiny. So when it gets to someone, it looks good and makes them happy. So this, this is pretty late in the process. Nate would have already gone through and uh, removed all the tool marks from the rounds. Um, this is after, you know, after fitting, after test firing, you know, we'll clean them up, get every, get all the hand beveling done, and then we'll actually start taking all the tool marks and everything out. That way we know that it's in, it's in a condition ready for final prep. So once we've gotten the guns back from our vendors, they'll go through some inspection and then we'll start putting them together. Jeff's working on assembling, looks like a uh, blued Quantico here. Right. Uh, we're gonna check the trigger pull. We're looking for like a four pound trigger. So how much weight do you have on there now? Uh, this is three and a half, so it picks up three and a half. We'll try it with four. I had to shake it a little bit. Let's try it again. <laughs> a little bit heavy? No, I thought it was okay. Let me try it again. Yeah, it's still a little heavy. Okay, so we got to adjust that down a yeah. little bit. So when you're going to take that down, what's what's the first thing you're going to look for here? Uh, we're going to adjust the sear spring a little bit. Okay. We're going to back off the tension on the furthest left leaf here. The arm that pushes off. directly on the sear? All right. Okay. What do you think has the largest impact on the trigger weight and trigger feel? Well, just the whole hammer and sear engagement okay. and, the, and the, ten, the amount of tension on the sear spring. Okay, so it's kind of a balance of a few different components and right. a couple different arms of the sear spring. So let's try it again at three and a half. Picks up three and a half. Try four. And it does not pick Perfect. up more. So that's How's it four, feel? Feels great. That's a four pound trigger. Real happy with that? Yeah. yeah, it feels really nice. So shooter takes this out and he's running, you know, a couple hundred rounds through it. He might notice some changes in his trigger over time. It's possible that the sear spring could lose some tension. Yeah, parts kind of wear in together. Right. So <clears throat> would you say we try to Try to aim for the higher end of the three and a half to four. That way there's a little bit of room for air there. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, one, now that we got that all set, we can put the rest of the stuff in. Of course, with these ambies, you got to take the slide off. Old gunsmithing trick, just slide it forward a little bit. Right. With the so, Jeff, you, you've been with Alchemy since, since day one, but you were working on 1911s before that. How long, uh, how long have you been pistol smithing? Um, I originally started working on 1911s in like 1983, but I did some other things along the way. So I don't have 40 years experience, but I have been working on them for that But long. you've been thinking about them and tinkering with them for right. multiple decades at this point, huh? Right. And this is gonna need a little adjusting because it's a little loose over here. A little loose on the uh, ambi side. Right. Okay. So the way we're going to fix that, we're just going to squeeze this a little bit and get it back to where it's supposed to be. So it's going to be, everything's even again. Go back a little bit. And that should do it. That's perfect. Nice right and there. tight. Yeah. Nice snap to it. Both sides. So this pistol is now ready for the first step of the QC checks after final assembly. Right. I'm going to wipe everything down, uh, check all the boxes on the Traveler, and send it on. So that's some of the bullet points of building an Alchemy. Um, at this point, we have a complete gun. It has been test fired. It is safe, and it is beautiful. So at this point, It'll go through all the final steps of quality control. It'll ship to you and you can continue to feed it ammo and enjoy it for the rest of its life.